uh, we had a home in the village uh, in a in a in a 20 acre land so it was an agricultural land pertinent to the coast of the river so our childhood was full of fun with the nature with what river water and also adventures in the flood water whenever the river swole, so river got swollen up in the rainy season there were many risks as well we kept a boat in the house uh, the most beautiful memory that i have of my childhood is uh, i had very uh, energetic naughty siblings I was a relatively contemplative and physically weaker child, so I used to like my own space and keep aloof. So evenings used to be very noisy in the house, but I remember walking alone in the courtyard and watching the twilight moments when I felt the golden hue of the sun on those, uh, uh, you know, uh, touch me not plant which was just falling asleep. One incident I remember is my very naughty younger brother taking a parrot from the uh, cage, uh, I mean from her nest in the tree and my father urging to put the parrot back in her nest because her children will uh, miss it and uh, uh, one of my brothers, my other younger brother taking lesson from that, next day when we were going in the field, uh, we had some sugarcane fields as well which was an experimental cultivation and a little sapling of the sugarcane got trampled by him and it got uh, crushed under his feet and he was uh, suddenly taking her back and he was looking at the sapling and I was just standing beside him. He was talking to the sapling. I'm sorry I must have hurt you, you are the young child of this plant. So such is the beautiful memory of childhood and we, uh, uh, because our house was uh, one mile away from the school, while going to school we were asked to form a group and walk and I was supposed to lead. In fact, I was physically smaller compared to my cousins and my siblings. But I was made, because I was made responsible to lead, because I was the quiet type, I would be wiser, considered as wiser in the group. I was older by age also, one or two years older from some members, three, four years older. So I used to take the responsibility of bringing them back and reaching them to the school, seeing that they don't veer away into pursuing a cow or uh, uh, pelting a stone at a mango tree, etc. So that rich childhood in a school where we were asked uh, to spend time with other children in the uh, uh, leisure hours um, is something that I never forget. Uh, the beauty of friendship, the beauty of sharing, the beauty of being responsible to each other. Even till this day, these uh, classmates and cousins keep in touch. Some of them are in Mumbai, some of them are in the village. They could not continue their studies because, you know, in rural India, education is uh, so poorly looked after. Our school had one uh, pass out, which was me, whereas uh, 57 students failed in one or another subject because for two years there were no teachers. Uh, they got transferred and nobody got replaced. So it made me determined uh, to see that education as an empowerment should be uh, made a birthright to everybody and that uh, these memories are still the links which uh, make us uh, connect to this day and we have no other subject but to talk about all those adventures and pains and pleasures to consolidate that human bond you know uh, when I was in the final BSc I was given a challenge by the teacher that uh, why don't you study these uh, areas of genetic diseases and prepare a module in the vernacular language. Now that was my kickstart to popular education in science and uh, I joined this uh, Save the Western Ghat movement which was led by Madhav Gadgil, incidentally he is in Pune, uh, the scientist and then also uh, our local NGOs. But the most beautiful memory that I have is my meeting with this uh, uh, a group of students when we went on this uh, science elocution competition uh, I went like uh, very low lying because in the district level I topped so I was sent to the state level which was sponsored by Indian Institute of Science that's how I got uh, in connection with Gargil sir and others so uh, I met this uh, girl student from the other division normally uh, math students and uh, biology students don't get to meet in this huge uh, convent based uh, college she forced me 
शी बिकेम माई फ्रेंड विद इन नो टाइम देन आई केम टू नो दैट शी वॉज अ सिंगल पेरेंट चाइल्ड एंड आ बॉन्ड बिकेम सो स्ट्रॉन्ग शी बिकेम माई इंस्पिरेशन फॉर माई ग्रोथ ट्रांजिशन फ्रॉम स्कूल गर्ल फ्रॉम द विलेज टू एन एडल्ट लेडी इन द सिटी शी एक्सपोज मी थ्रू हर फैमिली कनेक्शन टू सो मेनी गुड एक्सपीरियंसिस बट आई एम वेरी सैड टू से टूडे शी इज नॉट विद अस एनी मोर बट माई फ्रेंड विद्या वॉज सच अ सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ लाइफ that uh, she wanted whatever she wanted to know she would read if she didn't understand she would come and tell me you read this and tomorrow i am coming back to you you have to explain to me uh, so her family had a huge library because they were very wealthy and they were scholars for many generations uh, vidya would bring me this book on palmistry and then uh, she wanted to test my knowledge by using her palm as experiment and uh, whatever i told more than what i knew her as a friend uh, came true within next 6 months so she went and told all the girls so afternoon experience was to meet other students and read their palms and to this day i have gained many friends uh, because they remembered what i had said in those days as a learner coming true so this was uh, one of the most uh, memorable experiences of my college days and uh, the rewards and other things which came along with that the recognition and the large world of friends and human understanding that i gained from my uh, experience through palmistry so one of the most memorable incidents is this uh, poor lady who was being harassed by her husband when i i started teaching law she came to our law school through the legal aid and i was uh, spending 2 to 3 hours a day in the legal aid cell virtually i was the cell with the students so i gave this challenge to the student shall we solve this problem so 10 of my students came with me and we helped that lady including a little bit of intervention in her household to get her out of the situation and rehabilitate her and get her the justice but uh, uh, to my dismay later on there came a proposal for law reform competition 10 of the same students hung on with me and each one of them is so successful in their life one is one of the lead criminal lawyers the other is a single lady lawyer in uh, bangalore uh, doing very well in real estate sector another became a judge so this is a very memorable incident for me where as a teacher i was able to uh, inculcate in them this commitment to public service and uh, later on when i got the opportunity to teach in national law school and then in ireland later on as the dean of uh, symbiosis law school thousands of students when i met these experiences of mine became the guiding light i remember in symbiosis when i had to directly guide phd students couple of, uh, most of my students took a very impacting topic or i converted them into impacting topic and made every student to look at the reform side of the law how community can uh, feel the limitation of the law and community can contribute to developing a law rather than the top down approach so using the legal education channel as a channel for changing the face of democracy and law in this country whatever might be the extent of influence came from my star students whom i never forget um in symbiosis law school i came across a couple of girl students and uh, a, a good uh, uh, senior students as well who influenced me in developing my research who to this day remain as uh, my extended family the relationship changes sometimes i wonder whether i love my students more than my own son so my son often says that as well if it's a student you pick the phone even in the middle of the night so this is the way we teachers find our extended self in uh, our students uh, one incident i still remember uh, uh, a dozing student in the class and i stopped my lecture and i asked that student to come and meet me uh, because during the course of my lecture i used to give little snippets of poetry i was citing milan kundera in that uh, class so he came to my cabin and he said uh, that do you know why i was dozing the quote that you gave there about uh, uh, fallibility of human existence provoked my own life's uh, memory from childhood where uh, i did not know my step brothers who were waiting for the bus school bus along with me in the bus stand because both the parents had remarried and there were step children who were kept away from each other so he said it traumatized him today this boy is a senior judge in one of the leading courts in kerala i was so happy that i made that boy transform from being very uh, closed kind of uh, person uh, grieving within 
into a very open kind of person expanding himself and uh, considering that world is there to uh, world is his field and world is there to help him and he has to bond and he has to make that first ba- breakthrough um in 2000 uh, about 2011 in the middle of the sleep uh, i mean in the midnight around midnight i was woken up by this is a uh, Uh, this uh, soul changing uh, dream where i had my dead father uh, guiding me to read a scripture and where to pause and where to put the comma and how to chant it and uh, then uh, he also asked me to peep into some uh, part of the uh, dilapidated building and i had the darshan ultimate darshan of shakti so uh, i couldn't believe if it was dream or if it was wakefulness and then when i woke up i ran the whole house in the middle of the night because i didn't know what to do what to make of it and uh, 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 you know for days together i would recall it and i would get into a state of trance so finally i was trying to find an answer to it i met astrologers nobody was able to explain the dream then i started going on the net i read about kashmiri saivism i read about shakti cult because my father had never given uh, the secrets of his spiritual practice to us as he expired by the time i was doing my masters so uh, as i was browsing the net i suddenly found the name of a guru who was from a place called devipuram from bishakhapatnam and the day i was browsing he was in pune in his daughter's house so i immediately called and i took an appointment uh, with my busy schedule i could go only the next day which was a weekend and when i met him i narrated the dream he was able to explain to me that how uh, the energy which is encircling or the whole uh, universe is full of energy and vibration and then how it was indivisible and how it was interconnected and my time had come to get into the uh, spiritual practice and uh, incidentally this uh, gentleman expired recently about couple of years ago at the age of ripe age of 91 and he had attended his siddhi in my hometown through some of the gurus who were known to my father so i was thinking all the way from mangalore to pune to meet uh, such connection um, uh, was very uh, it was much beyond anybody's imagination that serendipity or coincidence of that happening Uh, then from 2011 onwards i was continuing in between with my work and family responsibilities it was going on and off suddenly in 2016 my professor came to visit me he is also in his 80s and uh, he told me uh, his wife is a sadhaka and she told me that you need to complete something because i had uh, taken both of them were not able to walk with the help of my kind colleagues we were able to wheelchair them into shirdi sai baba's sanctum sanctorum so they remembered on the way back they said that you need to complete your sadhana on without any invitation the lady was speaking and then uh, she tried to connect me to somebody but that somebody was not available and then she found out that the person is in pune itself so my current uh, preceptor is in pune from the anandamai ma uh, uh, tradition and uh, he initiated me into shri chakra so what uh, devi puram's guru um, I started uh, uh, at that time he so he had sown as a seed initially my father in the dream state and then him and now recently i was listening to on youtube uh, to one uh, great uh, uh, sri chakra sadhak uh, raja choudhury and i was so amazed to see that he is the disciple of amritananda the guru whom i met in uh, pimpri in 2011 and uh, amritananda uh, has uh, made a temple which is now considered as a modern shakti peetha incidentally he was a senior scientist in bark who was woken up in the middle of the night by goddess and uh, he was driven to go to his uh, hometown and there he found a place where sea was meeting the cliff and he created this devi puram so this spiritual uh, sadhaka's experience and their path and those traditions everything coming through the visit to shirdi or some kind of uh, connection to shirdi including symbiosis and pune i feel is that experience of not to consider anything in your life as sainath always says not to consider anything in your life as something that was not preordained everything is preordained maybe even this moment of my narrating this experience